and welcome back everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Rebecca McLean joins us. She is the very new Executive Director at the United County History Center. Congratulations. Thank you, Joe. What, two weeks on the job, something like that? Yep, just over two weeks. Yeah. So, and uh, it's uh, quite distinctive in the fact that the interim director, uh, Elizabeth Tantello, um, was not, I'm trying to figure out how to, you are the first female full-time uh, permanent executive director. That is correct, yeah. so kind of history in the making. Yeah, well, it's pretty good since the uh, History Center has been around since uh, 1876. That is correct as well, so. Yeah. And uh, I know you're interested in history or you wouldn't be down there. Of course. Um, how, did it, how did it get going? How did the History Center get going? The History Center? Yeah. Um, well, so 1876, it was our country centennial, so there was just a lot of excitement about U.S. history. Um, history in general in the community. So that's kind of cited as the main reason. And then you kind of just see all throughout the United States um, the growth of museums during the late 1800s and early 1900s. They started to become a thing, um, starting to share not only historical objects, um, but items that people thought were interesting. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they called them cabinets of curiosities. Um, so it was just a culmination of those two things yeah. um, that brought the History Center to fruition. And this History Center, well, it, it wasn't always the United County History Center. It's had some different names over the years, yes? Yes. So it officially started as the Oneida Historical Society at Utica. Um, and then at some point in the 1900s, we dropped the at Utica. Um, we changed to the Oneida County Historical Society. And most recently, in 2017, we became the Oneida County History Center. Mm -hmm. So the mission has always uh, surrounded kind of preserving and sharing history for the local community. So not just Dudica, but Oneida County and kind of the greater Mohawk Valley. Um, so just a few different names to kind of stay relevant, yeah. stay in people's ears. This would have been a good question for uh, Andy when I had him here, but uh, the dropping of society and going to the United County History Center, uh, he was in favor of that because it was it's more of a inclusive kind of a title, yes? Yeah, absolutely. So I know that the push to change the name um, started long ago, even before I was there, um, even as a volunteer, and it is just to make it a little bit more inclusive. Yes, um, we are supported by a great membership, um, but most of our services are open to the public um, at low cost, if mm -hmm. not free. Yeah. So we wanted people to know that that's available to them, even if you're not a member. Yeah, I should have asked you this question right at the beginning. Is the center open? Yes, absolutely. So currently we're open Monday through Friday, 10 to 4. Um, we are likely to maintain those kind of traditional summer hours while we're under COVID restrictions. Um, but we hope to offer some evening and weekend options for those who can't make it in during regular hours. And then we also have a lot of virtual offerings. So if you physically can't come down or you're not comfortable coming down, um, we have a great social media page. We've been doing virtual lectures, which have all been uh, recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. Um, and we're, we're always kind of thinking of new ideas to stay connected with the community. And I should have asked, I'm thinking of all these questions I should have asked Andy when okay. I had him here. <laughs> uh, but one of the pushes that he has is for more members. He wants to get more members uh, uh, enrolled at the United County History Center. And there's a, it's not very expensive, is it, Rebecca? No, absolutely not. So for an individual, it's only $40 a year. For a family, um, it's 70 We also have a corporate um, and a club membership as well. Um, a lot of great benefits. You get a quarterly newsletter. Um, if you're a genealogist or interested in researching, you get free access to the library, um, which pays for itself in just a trip or two. Um, and then you also get a discount in our bookstore, which is also online now. And last but not least, you're supporting all of our free public programs. So by supporting us, you're allowing access to our exhibits and our programs as well. And one of the, uh, I was uh, looking on the website the other day, and there, you've got a bunch of uh, you, things on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, Jack Kenke had one on about Sylvan Beach. Uh, Lou Parada had one on uh, baseball. Baseball, yep. Yeah, some interesting stuff. Absolutely. We even had, um, which I was kind of excited about, I know you and Andy were talking about um, reaching different parts of the country, reaching outside of Oneida County and even the state. Um, and so we did have one 
lecture from a professor, Dr. Peter Van Cleve, all the way from Arizona State University. Mm -hmm. He had previously visited us uh, two years ago to give a presentation, but he studies the Dutch, um, which has connections to our early history here. So it's kind of cool to be mm -hmm. able to connect um, to some different people that you normally wouldn't have access to on a regular basis. Right. So uh, people that want to uh, uh, go to those uh, uh, talks, mm -hmm. just go to YouTube and... Uh, yeah, so the lectures that are already recorded, you can just go to YouTube and our um, tag or our name, we're at Oneida County History. Um, you can also find a ton of links on our webpage, OneidaCountyHistory.org. And then if you're interested in watching one of the live lectures, um, there's always a link to join on our Facebook page or our website. Um, previously, we just had click and join, but we are, have started, uh, it's free, but starting registration for security concerns. Yeah. So it, it's really simple, just a few clicks and you're, you're good to go. Right. Whenever somebody tells me something is really simple, I worry, Rebecca. Uh, mentioned Joe Botini, Andy mentioned Joe Botini, uh, the United County uh, historian, the official United County historian. He's doing a lecture, is he not? Uh, yes, so um, in just a few days, on Wednesday the 30th, September, mm -hmm. uh, at 6.30, he's going to be doing a program on Utica's Union Station. So a National Historic Landmark, and then of course just a beautiful building mm. and piece of history. What about, uh, I, uh, I was going to ask Andy this, but he thought it'd be better posed to you. Um, I think there's like 30,000 pictures in the collection at the History Center. There's, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of documents. Have you thought about uh, the advantages of trying to digitize that? Yes, so a lot, most of the pictures I will say are already digitized. We are working on digitizing the manuscripts and paper documents. Um, they're currently available to be viewed digitally in the research library, um, and our hope is to, in the coming years, to get it organized properly to be able to put online for access remotely. Um, so, it's, so it's in the works, it is a very big complicated process mm -hmm. um, but it's absolutely in the works and uh, Andy was mentioning the need for volunteers uh, what would the what would a volunteer do so we have a variety of volunteers many work in our research library um, some are retired librarians historians um, others just simply have a love of history um, but they do everything from helping to organize our digital collections um, organizing the physical collections, simply answering the phone. Uh, we have a few volunteers who help out with the bookstores. Um, so, you know, any, any place in the building, essentially, if, if you're interested and you have the skills, we can yeah. probably find a appropriate project. Yeah. What's on display now in the uh, History Center? Cool. So we do have a few exhibits that have been up for a little while, if you haven't been in. Um, there's one on World War I. Um, we also have one on the local suffrage movement for um, women's history as well. Um, and then newly created, we have a nice little display on James Schoolcraft Sherman, uh, U.S. Vice President, mm -hmm. and other presidential connections. Um, so just highlighting items that we have related to presidents in our collection or kind of fun facts about, um, you know, if they lived in the area, when they passed through, things like that. Uh, the uh 1608 Genesee Street hasn't always been the home. It used to be a church. Correct. Um, it hasn't always been the where, where has it been before this? So we did actually, we started out down um, on Elizabeth Street, and we actually started out in a room in the public library for our first few years. And then there was the Munson Williams Proctor Memorial Building, also down um, on the corner of Elizabeth John Street and Park. And that was our home um, up until about 1960 when we moved to Fountain Elms. Yeah. And we're in the basement of Fountain Elms um, until the late 80s when 1608 Genesee Street was purchased. Um, we had to do a little bit of renovating. Um, there's some really cool pictures actually of us flattening the floor, or the organization rather, um, you know, adding just some modern amenities and then we opened to the public in 1991. There's a really, talking about really cool pictures, there's a really cool picture of the United County Historical Society when it was down on where John, Mary, uh, and Park come together, um, a little triangle of land. I think there's a noodle shop or something on yeah. the site today. <laughs> but uh, it's, there's a really cool picture of that building. It's a beautiful building. Um, it's down in the research library. 
So actually, that has been moved up to the exhibit gallery. Oh. So that's another little oh. exhibit we have now. Okay. Um, we had a great intern from SUNY Poly this summer, um, and she kind of expanded a display we already had talking about the history of the building, and she expanded it to talk about the history of the organization. Ah. So just pop in the exhibit gallery anytime we're open, and you can see that and other pictures of um, not only 1608 Genesee, Genesee Street, but our earlier buildings. Yeah. What about uh, uh, exhibits going forward? Got anything in your mind that make for a good one that you're kind of tossing back and forth? I mean, there are so many ideas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want to, you know, give anything away or promise anything because mm -hmm. um, there's so many great pieces of history. Mm -hmm. um, but there, we have so many ties to uh, national history that I think would be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know we just celebrated the start of the construction of the Erie Canal, but we'll probably need to celebrate, or I'd like to celebrate the completion of the Erie Canal, its 200th anniversary, um, That'd of course, be a good in, one. you know, 2025, yeah. um, brewing history. Yeah, and know, speaking of history, uh, I, I can't let you go without mentioning the uh, first project of United County uh, Historical Society, as it was then, and that was the Ruskini Monument. Yeah, so that's kind of an interesting piece of history that I don't think a lot of people know about is the Oneida Historical Society at Utica was really responsible um, for organizing the construction of the Oriskany Monument. Mm -hmm. um, and I recently learned, I guess we originally owned a few acres of the property, which mm -hmm. has since been given, of course, to the National Park Service. Um, but we helped raise the money. Um, yeah, and the building materials, that's and, interesting too. Yeah. So the uh, granite, I believe, is from old abandoned locks from the Shenango Canal. Yeah, yeah. So we, we were re recycling even back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Come back again and bring some artifacts maybe next Absolutely. time you come and we'll do a little show and tell here. All right. Sounds good. That's going to do it for us this week, but we'll be back next week. We'll do it all again. Don't forget cnyhomepage.com. There's lots of good stuff there. Until next time, take care of yourself, everybody.